In life's name and for life's sake, I say that I will use the art for nothing but the service of that life. I will guard growth and ease pain. I will fight to preserve what grows and lives well in its own way. And I will change no object or creature unless its growth and life, or that of the system of which it is part, are threatened. To these ends, in the practice of my art, I will put aside fear for courage and death for life when it is right to do so, till universes end. I'm a wizard now? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hello, this is new. <laughs> Usually I'm accompanied by the girls from Only Lovers and we're talking about romance and we're like using hangouts. So they're in different places. Or it's just me and I'm very belatedly just doing a list of books that I liked and I'm very irresponsible with that. Uh, and suddenly it's a man. And this is my friend Gabriel and I convinced him to do a thing with me. Uh, some a thing that I like to do and I've done this with a few of my friends and like always I've been able to convince many of my friends to get on camera with me to talk about it she's very convincing <laughs> so um, we're gonna talk about what book well I gave Christina so you want to be a wizard by Diane Duane. By Diane Duane. Mm -hmm. Diane Duane might sound familiar for any Trekkies out there. She has written many a number of Star Trek novels, including Q Squared, if I'm not mistaken. And what was that one that you had? The Dark... It's not The Dark Half. It's like The Dark Mirror or something. The Dark Reflection, where there's like a sexy Picard. It's and then like a... a se wait, are you implying that there's... Oh, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> there is a sexy Picard and then like a sexier Picard. Oh, dang. So you want to be a wizard, as the name would imply, is in the vein of a sort of urban fantasy. It's not the sort of, although it came out around the same time, the Harry Potter sort of jump of Whoa, wizardry you're good, and fantasy. you're jumping all over my interview, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Chill, sorry. we're going to get to Harry. Anyways, this is a book that I gave Christina. It's my favorite book okay. as a child. Why? When did you read this book? My first book series was Harry Potter. And then right after that, I was afraid that I was like, oh, what if I just don't like reading? What if I, like, I just like this one series and I'm never going to read again? And you were having a Harry Potter a, hangover. A, a sort of existential reading crisis. Okay. Oh, I like that. It was around, possibly around, like, 11, 12 years old. Um, and I found, so you want to be a wizard. I, I dug the cover art. Dragons. Yeah. Go cool. Like, a, a kid's. <laughs> Children, I was a kid once, so I felt, you know, <laughs> and I immediately just absolutely devoured it so quickly. I and became. This is, a, this is a standalone book. It is not. Uh, it currently the ones in my possessions are. Oh my. Uh, <laughs> uh, books one through uh, eight, I believe. Yes, eight. Uh, which includes, so you want to be a wizard, deep wizardry, high wizardry, a wizard abroad, the wizard's dilemma, a wizard alone, wizard's holiday, and, and she continues to just keep saying that she'll probably do more. Uh, there were talks of a movie, but oh, I'm pretty sure that's never going to happen. So what happens in this book? Okay. Okay. I'll try to summarize. Spoiler free because I want people to get really curious and actually go out and get the book. So the book begins with our heroine. Juanita. Uh, Juanita. Which, surprisingly, not Latina for some reason. I thought she was. She's Irish. Is, she's Irish, yes, because in, in A Wizard Abroad, right, A Wizard Abroad, she goes overseas and hijinks ensue. And she is the quintessential sort of bullied, nerdy girl. Uh, the book sort of starts off right off the get-go, her being like chased around her neighborhood by... Uh, her bully Joanne and like her sort of lackey crab goyle types and she hides off into the library so the librarian uh, helps her out like give, does her a solid and when the bullies come in she's like nobody's been here and and you know that Juanita is such a big nerd because the librarian like knows her and she's like ah oh, did you already finish the last stack and whatever so Juanita's a nerd okay. but such a beautiful nerd and then she goes to the children's section and she finds a book. And what's the title of the book? So you want to be a wizard? She 
thinks it's a joke book. She's like reading through it and she gets more and more curious because obviously in her heart she wants it to be real. So badly. Like, do you want to be a wizard? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Gabriel, where does the story take place? Uh, the story takes place in Erin around New York. Look at that. We brought this props. We are prepared. Be, uh, what? Takes place in New York. Takes place in New York. So the manual is a beautiful piece of fiction. Like uh, when Diane Duane sort of goes deep into when she actually writes uh, excerpts from the manual, they're just so good and they're so amazing. But before the Wizard's Oath, which Nita uh, needs to say to sort of accept the responsibility of being a wizard, there are a bunch of disclaimers uh, uh, along the lines of uh, wiz wizardry does not exist in the, in the heart of an unwilling soul. Uh, which is, and it has like these little quizzes about like possibly characteristics that you might have if you're a wizard. And like, eleven year old me was just like, Whoop. I'm gonna read an excerpt. You wanna read it? A wizard's business is to conserve energy to keep it from being wasted. On the simplest level, this includes such un, unmagical looking actions as paying one's bills on time, turning off the turning off the lights when you go out, and supporting the people around you in getting their their lives to work. It also includes a great deal more. Because wizardly people tend to be good with language, they can also become skillful with the speech. Okay, that's what I wanted to ask you. What is the magic system? The magic system is, um, is really cool. Uh, basically, this is where Diane Duane's sort of sci-fi background comes into play. Mm -hmm. Magic in and of itself is not a phenomena that does not have an explanation. It is simply the reaction of the universe. The universe is alive. The universe... It uh, has sort of these powers and these rules. So if you put certain objects and say certain things and draw certain things in a certain time and place, then the universe will react to it. And the effect of that is magic. The power of words is very heavy on this one, on this book. For example, uh, the oath, you have to say it out loud. The wizard's manual, it, it's very heavy on the words, the book of night without moon which is literally about describing things. Um, so it, it's like very description-heavy magic. Yeah, you and... You say a thing, you have to say its true name, and you, you have to say it there's the a, speech. There's a power in knowing a name. There's a power in knowing the words. And the speech is a representation. The speech is apparently this sort of magical language that every sentient being knows. Uh, the, the speech also is applicable to non-conscious beings because apparently to the to the young wizard series at the everything has a semi-conscious because everything has energy everything has energy so you could talk uh, to, to a rock to a rock uh, their their intelligence their consciousness is much different than a human's or a animal's because they exist in a different their nature is so different that even if you could talk to them there could still exist this sort of wall between each other because you can't think like a rock. What would you, if you had the power of the speech, if you knew the speech, what would you talk to? What would you try and talk to? Oh, damn. D definitely my dog. Uh, <laughs> uh, dogs. And probably maybe insects. Like, I don't... I would try like, to reason with ants. Yeah, like, yo, I don't want to, like, kill you, but could you not? <laughs> could you get, stay out of my say, peanut butter? Wait, Thanks. Yep. What is it that Nita wants to do with the book? Like, what is her primary objective? Is it to save the universe? Okay. Uh, I mean, definitely, like, she... I believe that at this point, she hasn't figured it out yet. But the, the biggest plot point, the overreaching plot point of this book that includes meeting, meeting a version of Satan, going into alternate dimensions... Befriending saving, a, a white hole. Befriending a white hole. It is all driven by the singular purpose of finding Nita's space pen. Yeah. I feel like this is one of the themes in the book. When we're talking about language and the power of language, Nita doesn't fight back. She never fights the bullies physically, even when her parents are just like... Beat her up. Just, like, hit her. Her parents themselves are like, what the fuck? Like, the whole use your words mm -hmm. thing. She learns she how to use a speech, and then she uses her words to combat this bully. Yes. And once she becomes a wizard, she which she did so having read all the disclaimers, because the book is very explicit in saying that this being, being a wizard is immensely wonderful, immensely amazing. But with great power comes great responsibility. Magic apparently comes from the powers that be, which are 
godlike entities, and then there is the lone power. The lone power is the main antagonistic force in all of the series. He's he basically is, Satan. He is an incarnation of Satan, and it's really cool how the book does it. Because it doesn't feel like Satan. It's not Satan. It's like, not. It's just that he is, like, yeah, like, I've been called that before. There's always been this sort of mythalization of, uh, amongst the wizards, there's always been this the story. Mm -hmm. The story of the lone powers... And the lone, uh, I mean, the story of the powers that be and the lone power and how he, how uh, the powers that be gave gifts to the universe and he gave the gift of death. He's a trickster. He's a deceiver. The star snuffer. He's entropy uh, incarnate at the big, 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 big. Uh, they show you different iterations of him through the books. Such as? Such as at the, uh, tentacle kraken monster such as an alien uh, suited guy such as a handsome man in a suit Como que, uh, that's the first in, in, in corporate lawyer the lone power deceived everyone else and introduced death to the society how does Juanita encounter the lone power okay so uh, quickly Right after she becomes a wizard, uh, her first thought is, like, let's think small, I'm going to get my pen back. Uh, it, she goes out into the woods, and she finds a kid, uh, aptly named Kit. They find out, through happenstance, it's not. Um, Fate! Fate! Uh, that, that he's a wizard as well, and he was practicing his own sort of spells. Can you specialize in a certain kind uh, of... Yeah, no, it, actually, Nita, and, both Nita and Kit change specialties throughout the book. It's special, like, she, her specialty is nature right now. At the moment. And the then first when, book, when the, she meets him, he's, like, mechanical. He's mechanic. He's inanimate, inanimate object, cars, uh, radios, in a mechanical sort of, along those lines. That's his specialty. Like, there's the magic of making a spell. But there's also the simple magic of the speech. Like we mentioned, the speech is the this magical language in which all things understand. You don't have to do a spell if you want an effect. You could just try and convince something to do what you want it to do. So like a, micro, uh, a microwave that's not working, instead of... You can use your speech to uh -huh, get it to work again. Uh -huh. Instead of expending a spell to sort of make it work, you could just... Like, hey, could you, like, do me a solid? If you could use a speech, what thing that broke would you have fixed? Every single one of my consoles. <laughs> the PS3. You know, every, every single one of my consoles. Uh, my washer that's currently broken. I'd be like, buddy, come on. What's up? I mean, I mean, clean clothes. Nita finds Kit, and they try to summon together the pen. The pen. Yeah. The space pen. They end up, I believe, summoning a white hall named Bread. That's like the short of his name. Yeah. Fred. His name is like this one. It's super, it takes up like the entire picture. Uh, but they call him Fred, and he's a conscious white hole. He's a delightful little He's the entity. character. And if, for those of you who don't know, I guess, uh, the white hole in the book is just, instead of a thing that absorbs matter, it just expels matter. At some point, it accidentally swallows Nita's pen, if I'm not mistaken. And then they have to go to the alternate dimension to find it. They're children of 12 years old, so they can't just be out all day. And so they looked for the help of the senior advisors of the area, as these wizards who have been around and will help younger wizards. Gay! Gay! They're like a gay couple. Oh, and my 12-year-old self just like, woo! No, but as soon as I read it, I was like... <laughs> yeah, like I reread it like a while back, and I was like, Whoa, these, these guys, guys are gay. They're like two. They're two dudes living together. Who just live together with in their the village. With their pet, with their pet toucan, Machu can, Picchu. That can tell the future. Who was an oracle. Yes. Uh, and they're just two dudes who live together and like they work. Uh, like one's a writer. Pals. Yeah, guy pals. <laughs> Obviously, the book never explicitly like makes any statement, but it like. <laughs> so they could go to these wizards because they need a time slot. Because obviously they're just kids and they have a curfew. They have a curfew. They can't just be all day in an alternate dimension looking for Nita's space pen. So they needed a point in time where no matter, like, they start here. And no matter how much time had passed, they can just go back to that point in time and lickety-split, go back home. Nobody's the wiser.
Do you feel like this book came into your life at the right moment? Like the same way that ah. the manual came into Nita's life at the right moment? Oh, definitely. Like, it definitely cemented my love for reading. And I obviously was, like, super into Nita's character and saw myself in her being, like, this little nerdy kid. And it even opened up so many doors in my nerd hum, nerddom hood. Like, uh, I started... Uh, I, I looked up Diane Duane and saw her roles in, in sort of Star Trek and I became and then I fell in love with Star Trek The Next Generation. Just the language that uh, Diane Duane uses in this book really shaped me on how to sort of express myself and how to be a better person and my ideals. Yes. I realized like how much of my personality was shaped by this book. Do you feel like you love the book for different reasons now? It, as a kid I simply loved this, ma this magical world, I love these characters. I, I love the way I could see myself with these characters. Mm -hmm. And and I thought it was really cool. Like, the lone power. That was definitely probably one of the first time I ever read a book that sort of directly outright um, gave an explanation or a sort of interpretation of the devil in my sort of young, Catholic-filled, small-town life. And I was like... I like it for different reasons now. Uh, probably there still exists some plenty of reasons of why I loved it as a kid, but I can definitely even appreciate it. Or I can definitely appreciate it even more for its genius and really for its sort of groundbreakingness. One of the main characters is a Latino kid, and like that to me, you know, was super cool. I didn't even, I, I, even at the moment that I read, it, read this, I didn't even know that it was a problem to have sort of main his Latino characters not stereotypes mm -hmm. and this book helped me to not see that too have you said the oath out loud <laughs> way more than once <laughs> and I, could, I also confess that i read it and then i reread it out loud <laughs> like without say without like the sort of uh, arthur I, directions like she said i was like i'm gonna cut all of this and say the oath out loud just say it myself and then just kind of like lean towards my plants and I, See if I, if I can also, catch anything. Also, big confess, to this day, whenever I come across a particularly beautiful tree, I will say dice do hold to it. <laughs> Just in case. For your final say, why should people read this book? It's wholly unique. You're not going to find anything out quite like it. It's more than 20 years old at the moment, and it, it's st and it still holds up. Uh, it still is a fantastical experience. It's still a fantastical adventure that me as an adult, I endlessly enjoyed it. Like, did tell me that like it didn't just carry it. It's it held up. It's really good. I was really surprised. Gabriel, thanks so much for talking to me. Thank you for letting me absolutely gush about this book. It's I'm okay. Sorry, sorry about uh, uh, taking up so much of the time. But that's what I, that's what this was for. I want to know why you liked this when you were a kid. Um, people who are ordering ordering this book, they're gonna get this one, or no. uh, there are several new editions of this book. I believe it's called the New Millennial Editions. At the, uh, mostly because the original books have sort of inconsistencies and errors with time. There's many. There's a lot of installments, and sort of Nita and kids age vary or. Or the time periods between the books aren't exactly consistent. And so they just kind of like polished it up so everything was consistent. Even though this book starts with a quote about imperfections in books, it's right? a really It's a really cool quote. Like, it's about uh, the magic of errors. It's cool. Okay. What's the word again? Daistijo. 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 Daistijo, Gabriel. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> she vanished. She's a wizard. I am a wizard. I read the oath. It happened. Hey, thanks for watching the first episode of Nostalgia Pal. Did this video give you the nostalgia feels? Was So You Want to Be a Wizard one of your favorites? Leave a comment to let us know. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like this video. And for bookish slash book club videos, subscribe to this channel. You can turn on your alerts so you get a notification whenever there's something new on here. Okay, that's it. Bye!